What's good, fam? This is your man, Jimmy Conway, BeatsForLyricist.com, music production tips. In this video, this is part two of our how to make a beat and record a beat with the MPC Studio software. Okay, so let's begin. So if you guys remember, uh, I'm so sorry it's been taking a long time between videos, but um, work has been killing me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, but um, yeah, if you remember about three weeks ago, I made this beat, it's called Project Beat, it's just a project beat, I'm gonna play it back for you real quick, just a reminder, let me cut down my headphones real quick. All right, so that's the beat that we was that I, that I worked on, just six tracks. Uh, There's a kick, snare, hi hat, bass line, piano, and like a bell arpeggiator. I'll leave a link in the description for the making of this beat. If you haven't seen the making of this beat, I'll I'll leave a link in the description. It's a long video, about forty minutes long. Go get your popcorn ready, and uh, just enjoy the video. All right. Um, the one thing I did decide, I'm not going to use this uh, tambourine loop that I had. Um, when I when I when we record this beat into Ableton Live, I'm going to get another loop from somewhere else, uh, like Loop Cloud. I'm going to get another shaker loop or something like that, uh, more than likely. Okay, so all right, so let's begin. So here's the project beat. We're going to close this out. I'm gonna open up Ableton Live. All right, and this is how it usually opens up. Two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks. Uh, for starters, we're just gonna use one MIDI track. I'm gonna come up here to the search bar. I'm gonna type in MPC. We're gonna go to plugins, VST, local I'm going to drag our MPC into the MIDI track give it a second as it loads in the software so now we're running we was just running the MPC in standalone before now we're running it as a VST instrument okay so what we could do now is we could load that same beat we had. Load recent, excuse me, project beat. Okay, so now we got our MPC and our beat here. So the first thing we want to do is change the tempo the tempo of our beat was about 97 beat, beats per minute so drop that down and if you notice it changes in the mpc too all right next let's try and make this let me see if i can change the view to make this a little bit smaller uh, probably not no no doesn't let me do it there all right, let me just move this out the way then. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take those six. Let's, let's go to track view. Let's drop this down so we can see a little bit more of the tracks. Okay, beside the audio track. There. So, we have our six tracks. Bell arp, kick, snare, hi-hat, bass line, piano. We have to find a way to make this all six of these tracks go into Ableton Live on the separate tracks. I made a video on that before, but I'm gonna just do it again for those who haven't seen. You can also check the video if you want to. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the We're going to change the output for each one of these 
tracks. So for the kick, we're going to go from, sorry, instead of going to the program, we're going to go to stereo output three and four. We're going to do that for the snare too. Oh, jeez. Go to the snare. I'm gonna go to five and six, hi-hat. I'm gonna go to seven and eight. So now the drums will be tracked out. Now let's go for the uh, the bass line. All right, hi-hat's on seven and eight, so the bass line will put on seven and nine. I mean, nine and 10, excuse me. Piano will be 11 and 12. And the bell arpeggiator will be 13, 14. All right. So now we're done with the MPC for now. Anyway, we have everything ready to be tracked out to the Ableton Live. So if I hit play right now, why am I still here in the hi-hat? Go back to the hi hat. Yeah. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There should be a seven and eight. Based on nine and ten, right? Hold on. Make sure the hi hat is on seven and eight. Okay. Cool. So now, if I hit play. Shouldn't hear anything, right? So next up, go to Ableton Live. Go to your Ableton Live track. Hit Control T or Command T to add a new track. Now, two things I like to add to my audio track before I get started. The first thing is a utility plugin. I'll, I'll tell you why I use that in a minute. Um, Let's go to audio effects, let's go to utilities. This just helps with gain staging for me. Next, I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a plugin. It's a emulation plugin of a real analog mixing board. Question is which one do I wanna use? I'm gonna use the AMEC. 90, 90, 90, 99, excuse me. All right. So this plugin here, it's like a mixing channel, like, you know, like a real mixing board. It's, a, it's an emulation of a real mixing board. You can check it out if you want to. This, uh, this plugin has a filter. It has a gate, compressor, limiter, uh, EQ, You could uh, uh, turn the bass into mono. You can mono make. You have a mono maker here, and you can change the stereo width. All right. So let me just take off the gate real quick. On the high pass filter, I'm gonna do about thirty hertz. And down here, I'm right now. The EQ section is post compressor and I don't want it post compressor I want it pre compressor so I'm going to put it to pre now just for aesthetics um, over here there's a UI button there's a use new and dark like if I hit new pay close attention to the uh, around the knobs like the, the area right around the knobs right looks clean right so if I hit use, look at the dirt that comes on on the on the channels. Yeah, it looks like a real mixing board being used. All right. Then we have a dark dark option here. So I'm just stick to the new. All right. So now, now we're ready to copy. No, not yet. So next, the routing. What you want to do is take your external input, 
Change that to NPC. Go now one, go to post mixer and change that to Okay, let's take off the let's stop playing. Let's go to three and four. Okay. Let's close that out. Now we're ready to copy and paste this this track over and over again. So we're gonna copy and paste it uh five, six times. Hold on. Control D, hold on, select the track. Control D. Okay, so now I have each channel. Sorry. Each channel has that AMEC 9099 channel mixing board. Now what I want to do is when they when they did the emulations when Plugin Alliance and Brainworks did the emulations for these plugins, they didn't just emulate one channel of the mixing board. Most mixing boards have about you know anywhere between 24, 32, 48, and some up to 72 channels. And these companies, well, this company in particular, Plugin Alliance and Brainworks together well brain works mainly um they emulated every single channel of the board because every single channel of the board has a different um sound to it because they're using different components to make up the channel strips and each you know each component has a tolerance level so without getting too technical what we're going to do Go to the AMEC 9099, 9099, jeez. We're going to go here where it says all. You're about to change all the instances. Like over here where it says 1, 2, that's the emulation of channel 1, 2. If I hit all, hit OK. Now I'm emulating channel 65 and 66 of the AMEC 9099, excuse me. On channel three, I'm emulating channels 19 and 20. On channel four, we're emulating 44 and 45. And we can change it here too. You know what I mean? So, and what this will do is it'll give our um, mix a different character when you have more tracks added. It'll give you a mix of different the uh, the same character that the board would have had that the board would have you know what I mean, so so now that we got that straight, uh, channel two we're gonna leave one three four. Let's cut that out. Channel two we're gonna leave one three four. This one drop the five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. And if there's anything on this track here, I don't think so. I'm just put it there. 15, 16. Now, if I, oh, next thing you want to do is make sure all your audio tracks, your monitors are set to in. This will make sure that Ableton is monitoring the MPC signal that comes in to the track. Okay, so you can record. So let's hit monitor in. Let me shrink down these tracks real quick so I can see everything on a, a little bit better. Hold on one second. There we go, I don't have to keep going back and forth. All right, so now, everything's set up to a different output. So if I hit play now, everything you should see the levels of each track, the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, the piano or bass, piano, and the bell arpeggio, bell arpeggiator, excuse me.
Alright. Alright, cool. That worked out. Now, now I could I could sit here and I can mix. I could drop the, you know. Let me drop my let me drop the level of my headphones real quick, cause the music will blast in my ears. Hold on one second. There we go. We can drop the level of that's the kick, snare, hi hat. If I double click it, it'll go right back to where it was. Okay, for some reason I'm not seeing my snare here, so give me a second. Let me go back to the NPC. Let's go to the snare. The snare should be on five and six. I don't know why it's acting up. But let's put it back on five and six. There we go. Okay, so let's label everything just so we can have everything neat and so you can tell us what. Control R, kick. Control R, snare. Control R. Give me one second. All right, just gonna label out, label everything out so you can, you know keep track of what's what okay so now the good thing about doing the beat this way and mixing this way is well it's, is that if there's anything i don't like in the beat i could change it so i could if, if necessary i could go back to my mpc i could record more um more bits more pieces i could take out bits and pieces i could record with my track mutes if i want to I could record, um, I can make any kind of changes on the fly, where if I just export the audio into a folder and then drag and drop the folder audio into the project, you're just stuck with that, um, you're stuck with that, um, arrangement, so to speak. Now, you could chop it up in Ableton Live, of course, you could chop it up and move things around, but it's a lot easier and a lot smoother to do things on the fly i think anyway so that's just my opinion all right so, so now what we're gonna do is gonna kind of let me turn my headphones down again what we can do now is we can record this if you want to see, like, because we're visual people, you want to actually see the wave files, right? So we're gonna record everything we see here, everything we hear, onto the arrangement view. Okay. So let me make sure we start at zero. Let's hit record. Actually, pause. Let me pause that real quick. Let's put ready. Let's ready record all of our tracks. If you're on Mac, you got to hold the command button. You don't have to, but the way my settings are, I have to hold the command button and click each one. I'm just going to record that. So now, so now I'm ready to record everything tracked out and everything. So let's try it now. It's going to be a one bar lead in, and then you're going to see the audio file being tracked out. 
I'll try to zoom in. Okay, so now, turn my, let me turn my headphones back up. All right, so now we got our bits of audio. We got a kick, snare, hi hat, and everything all tracked out. Okay. So let's go back to the session view. Let's take the MPC. Uh, we're gonna cut off the actual MPC. Uh, VST because we don't want that playing alongside of the tracks we just recorded. Okay, so we're gonna cut this off. Go back to track view. We're going to turn our monitor monitoring back on to auto. And hopefully it should play. All right, so now from here, we could do anything. Uh, first, let's, let's cut the last bit of audio from the All right, so now we got a 24-bar loop, enough for a 16-bar and an 8-bar hook. Let's zoom back in or zoom back out, and we can still do our controls from over here. We have our, you know, our volume, we have our panning, we have our reverb, uh, we have our sends. Uh, so let's start by turning everything down let's go back to this view just to get a kind of raw mix going okay let's go back here Let's cut the loop on, hit control A. Actually, let's just highlight this track here. Hit control L, that'll loop the whole section. Hit tab, go back to session view, hit play, and just start raising things up one by one. Is cool. The kick is cool, but could use some work. Let's 
So let's go into our AMAC 9099. We're going to take some of the high end off that kick. First, you, wanna, you always want to make sure you're on the right track. <laughs> Let's do a little EQing. Turn the compressor off. Let's move this up so we can see a little bit more of our levels. Okay. I'm averaging about a little bit above 18. Cut that down a little bit. Let's work on a hi-hat. Let's take the hi-hat. I want to roll off a little bit more of the, uh, the lows. That's the snare. Doing that to me, go back to hi-hat. You always want to make sure you're keeping your levels tight. If you're boosting anything, you want to always make sure you comp you compensate by, you know, cutting back. All right. Snare.
to hit. I'm gonna tweak the snare real quick. I'm gonna cut out some of the um the low mid frequencies. And if you notice when you cut out the low mids, it automatically just brightens up a little bit. So And then you're just dropping your other, dropping your other instruments, dropping your bass line. I'm gonna pan the hi hat off to the left a little bit. Sorry, that's the snare. Excuse me. Or even better yet, I got a, I got a better idea. Let's just throw an auto pan on there to give the um, hi hat some life. Let's check out the hi hat real quick. Excuse me, pardon me. What you could also do, what's also throwing me off too, I need to color my tracks. Also, you can also group together your your tracks. So, like, sort of like what a program is in the NPC. So, let's say I want to take the kick, the snare, the hi hat, and the snare. Select all of them. Hit Control G, and now they're all part of a group. So I can add. I can close the group up. And I can add effects to the group now. The other advantage of using the MP, uh, the Ableton Live, is that I have unli unlimited effects, or I can use as many effects that my computer can handle. I'm not limited to. Let me turn this off. I'm not limited to four effects per channel or per track, like on the MPC, which is kind of like. I ain't gonna lie, that's kind of whack. Uh. Yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to get on that tangent, but yeah. So we got the hi-hat going, snare, bass, piano, and just make sure that, you know, you level everything out. Let's drop the piano.
And the little effect, the bell arpeggio, you want to have that in the background, just chilling. You don't want that too up front. And it's just getting a basic mix. This is not nothing, nothing crazy, just a little basic mix, all right? And now, and now you have your stems all tracked out. And you can export this however you want. Now you can go in here while you're in, excuse me. Just a couple tricks. Let me zoom back out. If I hit control A, if I hit control, if I, well, not control A. If I hit control E, it's just split the track. So let's just say I want this piano. Yeah, I'll get into uh, more editing features on another video because I don't want this video to last an hour long like it already has. <laughs> My fault, y'all. But yeah, I hope this helped you out um, as far as tracking out your song or tracking out your beat in Ableton Live. Um, let me know if you want more tips on Ableton Live too. Um, I put up a poll on the uh on a youtube community and i saw some people voted most people voted for mpc so i'm gonna do more mpc kind of um videos but i will incorporate some ableton live stuff into it uh if it's your first time here make sure you check the description in the uh description box there's a free drum kit for you also check out the first video of the making of this beat um the actual making of it we program the drums keys bass and everything else That'll be in the description too. Also, make sure you check out Loop Cloud. Oh, yeah, make sure you check out Loop Cloud. Uh, that's my resource where I go to get my royalty free loops. There's over 4 million royalty free loops there you can grab up. Uh, make sure you do that. Uh, use my link in the description, it'll definitely uh, help support the channel. You'll get a free 30 day trial and you can check it out. If you have any questions, you can ask me about it. And yeah, all my producer resources will be in the description below. All right. Anything that can help you. If you want to check out my studio, check out the Amazon links below. The Amazon links will be my affiliate links. So if you do buy anything through those links, uh, it will help support the channel. Um, Amazon will pay me a commission uh, for that. So yeah, if you like the video, if you think it helped out, please click the like button. Please share it. Please subscribe to the channel. And that's it. It's your man, Jimmy Conway, BeastfulLyricist.com, music production tips, and I'm out. Peace.